facility from EcoBank, ECOWAS Bank for Investment and Development to support small and medium enterprises in Ghana. President of the Economic of the ECOWAS Bank for Investment and Development, EBIT, signed last Friday in Lome in Togo a memorandum of understanding for $200 million facility to be dispersed through the Ghana Commercial Bank and the Ghana Exim Bank to SMEs. More from the 3i Africa Summit as government moves to accelerate disbursement of almost $1 billion from development partners by the end of the year to support the economy. The government is also implementing measures on the fiscal side including acceleration of disbursements of almost one billion United States dollars by our development partners between now and December this year to support the economy. Plus, Atlantic Lithium lists over 600 million shares on Ghana Stock Exchange to open up the company for other investors. That is why for us at the GSC, we are very excited about the policy direction to expand ownership of mining companies into Ghanaian hands. So for us today is a remarkable day. Tales of these and many more lined up for you. Please stay. Thanks so much for your company. I am Pius Kujobaka, and we've got to begin business from the 3i Africa Summit because Ghana has secured $200 million from the ECOWAS Bank for investment and development to support small and medium-sized enterprises in the country. President Ekufado disclosed at the FinTech and Innovation Summit 3i in Accra. Now, he's been given more details about this support. President Ekufado has also been highlighting his government's commitment to creating the enabling environment to aid innovation in the financial sector and aid in inclusion. Prioritizing digital inv investment in digital infrastructure, channeling resources into the communities that have been left behind by the march of progress, and bridging the digital divide that threatens to leave too many Africans on the sidelines of the global economy are exceptionally important and crucial. And we must deepen our partnerships across governments, financial institutions, tech firms and development agencies working together in a spirit of shared purpose and unwavering commitment to develop the innovative solutions and strategic initiatives that will propel us towards a more prosperous and equitable future. And to this end, in furtherance of our objective of providing financial access to SMEs, the Minister for Finance and President of the, Economic, of the ECOWAS Bank for Investment and Development, EBIT, signed last Friday in Lome, in Togo, a memorandum of understanding for $200 million dollar facility to be dispersed through the Ghana Commercial Bank and the Ghana Exim Bank to SMEs. The role of fintechs in ensuring that these resources reach SMEs and to monitor their growth cannot be overestimated. Well, the governor of the Bank of Ghana, Dr. Ness Addison, has stressed the need for African economies to invest in the fintech space to foster innovation on the continent. According to him, 
by harnessing the power of financial technology, the gap between marginalized communities in advancing technology can be bridged. He spoke at the summit. We need to have fashion out concrete initiatives and partnerships by the end of this 3i summit to achieve tangible policy outcomes that will enable affordable and safe instant cross-border payments, empower fintechs to drive Africa's economic transformation agenda by committing to a sound regulatory environment, advance digital public infrastructure, and finally explore the role of fintech in bridging the financing gap for SMEs, including the creative arts industries. Distinguished guests, the need to foster innovation and investment across diverse sectors is central to the various discussions that will go on in the next three days. The deal room and pitch fest will serve as platforms for entrepreneurs and investors to explore mutually beneficial partnerships driving innovation forward and fueling economic growth. Also, discussions on the use of fintech for inclusion should remain paramount to ensure that the benefits of technological advancements are accessible to all segments of society. By harnessing the power of financial technology, we can break the gap and empower marginalized communities advancing towards a more inclusive and prosperous future. More from the 3i Africa Summit, the government says it is implementing measures on the fiscal side, including the acceleration of the disbursement of almost $1 billion from development partners between now to December to support the economy. These assurances come at a time the city is depreciating against the U.S. dollar. Speaking at the summit, Minister of Finance Dr. Mohamed Amin Adam stated that government will continue to focus on the fintech space to drive growth and development. The success of financial innovations rests on a strong financial services sector that operates in a stable macroeconomic environment. To this end, the government of President Nana Adodanko Akufado is unrelenting in creating an enabling macroeconomic environment that will provide the platform for the success of the financial services sector. For this reason, Ghana's economic rebound has been quite swift with economic growth ending the year 2023 at 2.9% against a target of 1.5%. Inflation heading towards the year end target of 15% and which we are determined to work to reach a single digit inflation by 2027 and interest rates declining as well. Despite recent pressures, on our currency, the city's depreciation year to date of 12% is far lower than its depreciation of 27% in the same period last year. The government is also implementing measures on the fiscal side, including acceleration of disbursements of almost 1 billion United States dollars by our development partners between now and December this year to support the economy. As we convene at the 3i Africa Summit here in Ghana, it is incumbent on us to acknowledge the remarkable strides that Ghana has made in nurturing a vibrant fintech ecosystem. Ghana's fintech sector boasts of a diverse array of startups, accelerators, and regulatory initiatives, solidifying our position as a front runner in fintech innovation across the continent. Now, the Chief Commercial Officer and Vice President of e-Currency Mint, Lars um, Adverson, is urging African central banks to accelerate the adoption of the digital currency to facilitate trade and investment across the continent. He believes this move will be critical to advancing the continent's fintech ecosystem while driving growth and innovation. He also spoke um, to my colleague, Winston Amwa, at the ongoing 3i Africa Summit here in Accra. It goes back to, I mean, it's a complex question. <laughs> it's not only one simple answer on it, right? It, it's the change behavior. Uh, ensure that the, 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 uh, the, the digital form of currency is accessible. And then you talk about network connectivity, for example, from a telecommunication perspective, right? Because you need to reach out to the mass people. 
and in many cases they live on, on, on the countryside, right? So it's uh, the technology aspects of it, of course, it's uh, change behavior. Uh, it's a cost factor as well, right? Uh, because to have the intermediaries or the actors in, in the ecosystems, they need also to buy into the business rational and business models to do this. And it's also a policy perspective. In some markets, they have probably the right policy in place, but in many markets, they need also to improve the policy to allow a digital kind of form for, for digital currency from a, a, a privacy perspective, from uh, other kind of policy conditions as well, right? Has funding been a key challenge? And if it hasn't been, uh, why the slow rate of adoption? I mean, it goes back to what I'm saying, right? Because it's, uh, it's uh, to some extent, this resistance from some of the players, let's say, who need to carry out the currency to the market. Uh, as I said, they need to see the business rational, the business model in order to do their investments, because these investments from all players in this, not only the center bank, it's also the banks, intermediaries and others who need this kind of investment. So that's one, one factor. Uh, and there is incentives in some markets to do it as well, right? So you need to see it from a short term, but you need to also see it long term. Because in, if we go into digitalization, and we can see it from other markets, uh, the, the, the address, the competitiveness will increase, but also the market will increase. And that fosters actually a good, good services over time, right? Away from the 3i Africa Summit, Finance Minister Dr. Mohamed Amin Adam is making a strong case for African leaders to boost support for the financial sector to play a critical role in the financing of some infrastructure and development projects. This, he explains, is key to cushion government in reducing the expenditure to focus on other key areas of the economy. He was speaking at the launch of the 2025 Africa Prosperity Dialogue. The launch of the African Prosperity Dialogue 2025 highlighted a pressing need for increased investment and in integrated infrastructure networks across Africa to facilitate seamless connectivity of people, businesses, and markets. Finance Minister Dr. Mohamed Amin Adam called for a concerted effort to boost intra-trade activities. I wish to emphasize the importance of supporting Africa's financial and development finance institutions in playing a more active role in financing development initiatives across our continent. Strengthening the capacity and resources of our DFIs will enable them to mobilize capital more effectively and to channel investment towards priority sectors, including energy sector, transportation, and telecommunications. Ladies and gentlemen, a key feature of Africa's trade, which has had some adverse implications for its impact on economic growth and development is its high external orientation and relatively low level of intra-regional trade. Intra-African trade stands at around 13%, compared to approximately 60%, 40%, and 30% of intra-regional trade that has been achieved by Europe, North America, and Asia, respectively. Executive Chairman of the African Prosperity Network, Gabi Asayo Chudakon, said the African Prosperity Dialogue 2025 will serve as a catalyst for mobilizing African stakeholders to invest in game-changing infrastructure projects that will unlock Africa's boundless potential. Africa boasts of an enviable wealth of natural resources. Imagine what Africa will be like in 20 years' time if we choose to get it right in this, our time. Despite the continent's potential, its infrastructure gap serves as a more potent blockade. The success of AFCFTA hinges on key enablers such as energy, water, R&D, i.e. research and development, ICT, transport and logistics, and the digital economy. This calls for substantial investments in infrastructure that will yield even greater rewards, enabling IFOS to create a larger pool of good jobs with good pay to happen. 
The launch event featured a panel discussion, networking opportunities, and engagement with policymakers, development partners, private sector leaders, and civil society organizations at the forefront of advancing Africa's prosperity agenda. I believe in Africa. I believe in Africa. I believe in Africa. Africa. Yeah. I believe in Africa. And we want to touch on some revenue story. And Finance Minister Dr. Mohamed Amin Adam has revealed that government will soon roll out some fresh revenue measures to help improve tax collections. This follows revelations that Ghana missed out on first quarter revenue targets by some 20%. Speaking to Joy Business after engaging some custom officials at the Plau border as part of a working visit, the minister said the numbers should improve going forward based on these reforms. Government is promising to provide the revenue mobilization institutions with the needed logistics and support in order to meet the revenue generation targets for the year. The government has projected 176.4 billion Ghana cities revenue in 2024, about 22% higher than the 2023 target, but has missed out on first quarter revenue target by some 20%. Speaking to Joy Business after visiting the Aflao border as part of a working visit, the finance minister, Mohamed Amin Adam, said government plans to increase revenue by implementing some new reforms. Last year, uh, revenue increase, uh, actually the growth of revenue was about 49%. I know that we can repeat it or even do better, but it is important we engage uh, so that uh, everybody comes on board. And uh, I am very happy about what I've seen here. I'm very happy about the energy I've seen in the officials here. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy about their, their, their resilience that they, they are determined to, to exhibit uh, towards pursuing our, our revenue. Of course, there are a number of reforms that we will be implementing uh, so that we can address issues of uh, uh, leakages, we can address uh, uh, the, the smuggling issues, you know, but at the end of it all, we are seen to be working together as, as, as citizens, as people who have stake in the development of our country. The finance minister added that these new reforms would address the budget deficit and aid in the completion of some projects in the country. Uh, in the first quarter of the year, revenue was short by about 20%, and that is not good enough. It means that we will not be able to carry out the, the projects that we, we budgeted to do. And this affects our development efforts. And so we need in the second quarter to close the gap in the first quarter and to be able to meet the, the target for the second quarter. And so my visit to uh, revenue collection centers is to interact with uh, officials of GRA for us to fashion out uh, the measures and the solutions towards addressing uh, revenue shortfalls. And so uh, revenue is what GRA is good at, and we must encourage them to, to do that. Dr. Amin Adam commended staff of the Ghana Revenue Authority for work they are doing at their flower border. This is still Business Life. We've got more for you after this break. Welcome back to Business Life. Demand for Treasury bills surged as interest rates took a nosedive on the money market. The Bank of Ghana auction results showed that government secured nearly 5 billion cities from the T-bill sale. More in this report. Of the bids came from the 91 day bill. About 3.825 billion cities, representing 77.7%, were tendered. All the bids were accepted. That of the 182 day bill was estimated at 822.39 million cities. The uptake was also the same. For the 364 day bill, 272.62 million cities were tendered. 
or were accepted. Meanwhile, interest rates continue to nosedive as the yield on the 91-day T-bill almost eased by 25 basis points to 25%. The interest on the 182-day bill also went down to 26.99% from 27.39% the previous week. But the yield on the 364-day bill remained relatively same at 27.99%. Most analysts believe the government will continue to borrow heavily on the Treasury market to finance its expenditure. The Atlantic Lithium Company has listed over 600 million um, of its shares onto the Ghana Stock Exchange to kickstart trading today. The move is part of the company's quest to have more local investors own part of the country's mineral resources. And this is the first lithium mining company to be listed on the country's local bears since its establishment. Executive Chairman of Atlantic Lithium, Neil Herbert, has been speaking to journalists after the first trading at the price of four cities, 40 pesos. Day for us, it was a commitment we made when we, we got the mining lease at the end of last year. A very important day for Ghanaians as well, so they can invest directly into the company. Obviously, we already have MIF as an investor in the company, and so actually to be able to have more shareholders in Ghana from funds through to individuals, it's a great day for us. This is, this is effectively now we are represented on three exchanges. So we're represented on the London Exchange, we're represented on the Australian Exchange, and now we're represented on the Ghana Exchange as well. And the shares can trade freely across all the markets. What's the future of the company in Ghana? So our sole focus is the development of the Awoya lithium mine. So the Awoya lithium mine, we should break sod on the project later in the year. And so we should be in production in 2026. And as we've said before, this is over 800 employees in Ghana working here on the project to deliver the uh, first lithium production in middle of 2026. It begins this year, so we, we, will, we will break ground later this year uh, on the project, and then we bring the construction, and the construction takes around 18 months, and then we will actually commission the plant in 2026. What time? Well, the managing director of the Ghana Stock Exchange, Abina Moua, described the listing of Atlantic as an opportunity for both institutional and individual investors to have a part of the country's mining industry. The mining sector is the dominant uh, contributor to our GDP, and we must develop a capital market that's representative of the economy. And that is why for us at the GSC, we are very excited about the policy direction to expand ownership of mining companies into Ghanaian hands. So for us today is a remarkable day, a day to see Atlantic Lithium listed on the Ghana Stock Exchange, meaning that it's an opportunity for Ghanaian investors, institutional as well as individuals, who are interested in the story to be able to access the shares that are listed in Ghana. And for us, that is very, very important. And again, Atlantic Lithium is in an important segment uh, of the uh, mining sector or an area called green minerals. As many of you know, Ghana Stock Exchange is very much at the forefront of making sure our economy develops in a sustainable manner. As I say, uh, GSE is ESG. It's ESG spelled backwards stands for GSE. And so we're very, very particular about making sure that Ghana's first lithium company, which is a green mineral, gets represented on the market so that investors that are looking for um, exposure to green minerals, to building a sustainable portfolio, would also have the chance to invest in it. Finally, we think to develop our capital markets, as other countries have done, it's important for Ghana to crowd in foreign investments into the country. One way of doing this is by making sure that all uh, mineral holders um, that have significant or major operations in Ghana get listed on the market. When they raise capital, Ghanaians can participate. Thanks so much for being part of Business Life for today. I am Pius Kujubaka. For more stories, feel free to log on to myjoyonline.com. And it has um, the bigger story on that portal. Three I Summit, Ghana signs $200 million MOU with EBIT to support SMEs. That's according to President Ekufuado. And we brought you that story here on Business Life. Also on that same portal, BOG Governor calls for more investment in fintech space. More stories on myjoyonline.com. See you same time tomorrow. Bye-bye.